Uh, first, we're taking a look at what's making the headlines today. Giles is here, as you've just seen. You had a sneak preview. Uh, Camilla Tomini as well. Welcome, both <laughs> well, of you. Well, you know, there's a real sense of excitement in the air. When you have a proper star, like Sir Patrick Stewart ah. in the building, there is a frisson going round. And I passed him in the corridor and I greeted him... Yes, you ..with did. the live long and prosper, mm -hmm. and he did not reciprocate. Did he not? I said, you are the star. Well, he says, but I don't do that in the films. The other... Mr. Spock. Spock oh. does that. Ah. Spock does that. Yes. And, and he can't do it. Patrick Stewart can't do it. Well, can't His do fingers that. aren't made that way. But live long and prosper oh, is our a, message yeah, to our viewers. Thumb in, thumb in, thumb in. Yeah, thumb in. Yeah, thumb in. Yeah, thumb in. There you go. Oh, well, we're looking forward to that chat later. Should we talk on. about other stuff? <laughs> this is um, this is quite an interesting one. This is this uh, emergency phone alert. So the government has set to trial with siren-like beeps. Have we got it? So we can just hear what it looks. I mean, this is this is just a test. Oh, so that is what is going to come up on your phone. It's going to be sent during events such as severe flooding, fires or extreme weather. You have to um, notice it. You have to click on it to turn it off. It, otherwise, it will continue to make that noise and it will override sort of silent mode on your phone. Be worrying. If you, if you weren't going to have a heart attack, this would encourage you to do so. It's quite alarming, isn't it? It is, it? totally. It's supposed to be alarming. Oh, well, I just... I spoke to Oliver Downton about this yesterday, Chancellor of, uh, Duchy of, Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, because it was his initiative from the Cabinet Office. Sort of asked, what's precipitated this? Is it about the war in Ukraine? Is it kind of like the Russian nuclear threat? It was like, no, no, not really. It's about severe weather warnings, and then it might be extended to terror attacks. Apparently, we do lag behind the rest of the world on this. Mm. Lots of other European and other nations have these alert systems. I mean, I suppose... You know, you can never have too much information. Well, he, but... see, he said, Oliver Downton, said uh, it will revolutionise our ability to warn and inform people who are in immediate danger, help us keep people safe, as we've seen in America and elsewhere. The buzz of a phone can save a life. Yeah, I think you have to acknowledge it before it will shut up. Mm. We were talking about, you know, this beforehand. I mean, are there places where, obviously, wherever you are, you want to be safe? But you know, it's going to go off, go off here. We've both got our phones on the set. But older people... My mother could never get to grips with a mobile phone. And some of the most vulnerable people may be people who don't have mobile phones. It does depend on that. So it doesn't, won't cover everybody, will it? No. Well, then hopefully you've got someone who has a mobile phone that can tell someone that you know yeah. doesn't have a mobile yeah. phone. Yeah. Um, it's just another layer, isn't it, I guess, of safety and... Is there also, though, a slight alarming element of the Big Brother uh, makes you realise that they can communicate with us everywhere? Does that mean they can, they can make our phones beep? Does it also mean they can pick up everything from our phones? They know our numbers? I don't, mm, I I don't, don't know. I don't know it how it works. works I don't think I... it works retrospectively. I mean, it's sort of it's just one way. Thing, just a one Isn't way. it a post-COVID thing, this idea that we were all downloading the NHS app and then they realised that our phones were this quite understandably very easy mass means of communication? I mean, I know what you mean, because there's something quite intrusive about it. You're going mm. about your morning and mm -hmm. there's an alert coming through. Having said that, if your house is just about to be flooded, I mean, you'd think that people might know that they were in imminent danger, and this is a local danger, thing. It's not, not going to go off nationwide. No, for it, but no. it will be a local I thing. Just, I, my GP, um, trying hard, it regularly is now texting me saying, you know, have you done this? Have you had that test? I'm almost thinking, you know, have you brushed your teeth today? It's just the idea of communication from on high. Well, so long as that doesn't go off and say the traffic lights aren't working on the A4, <laughs> then, uh, yeah. you know, that will be it. I think they will use it very, very sparingly. sparingly. Yeah. Few and far between, yeah. Um, let's talk about the crown now, have we? Because this uh, risks a, a fresh row, it says here, after pictures emerge showing a replica of the Mercedes which carried uh, Princess Diana. Um, this is the uh, Elstree set here, studios, where the, the, film, uh, net, the show's being filmed at the moment. Uh, people are saying, you know, is this a step too far? This shouldn't be shown, this is too much, this is just a real sort of ghoulish gawp at this sort of thing. Netflix is in the entertainment business. Mm -hmm. uh, the Crown is a drama, it's not a docudrama, it's an entertainment drama. For me, this is too recent and too horrible to be part of an entertainment show. That's, that's my take. And I stopped watching The Crown quite a while ago because I found the inaccuracies too annoying. Mm -hmm. I think there always has to be a sense of realism when you're trying to kind of depict true real-life events. I think they have said that they're not going to show the crash itself That's or its right, immediate yeah. aftermath, and I think most people would say, well, goodness. But again, you know, in the fictionalisation of tragedies in people's lives, perhaps the feelings of those closest to those involved get lost. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it was any of us, we certainly wouldn't want the details of a mother's tragic death no. in Paris being kind of filmed and recreated for ratings. Well, you've only yeah. got to read Harry's book to know how 
are painful, clearly painful, for anyone who loses a member of the family, but clearly deeply painful, and it would be the same for the, Although, for the Prince fair, of Wales as said well. Although, to be fair, he never had a problem with the Crown. That's quite interesting as well, mm. isn't it? You know, obviously, he's had a massive problem getting, with the press. We all knew that it was going to get more difficult as it got the closer. closer to time, it is yeah. exploitation of a recent tragedy, and the people involved are still alive, many of them. And it's different. If it's Queen Victoria or Henry VIII, that is history. This is history, but it's very recent history, mm. and the children of the person who died, and indeed uh, Dodie's family, they are still alive. So mm. to make <clears throat> entertainment out of this feels a bit awkward. Well, they would yeah. probably say that, that, that this is a... Uh, it is entertainment, but it is documenting, yeah. so a documentary, yeah. an entertainment documentary. Having said that, there are very clever ways to shoot round these things. You don't necessarily perhaps no. have to go quite so graphic. I think to see the like that was a bit too much.